morning, probably good afternoon or good evening for some of you. Come with me. I want to show you something not so fun during the holidays. So here's what's been going on. It's a little echoey because we're in the bathroom. <laughs> So, as you can see, our bathroom, the shower floor, was cracked. It was broken in so many different places that we had to get it fixed sooner than later. So I'll show a picture of what it was supposed to look like in terms of like the base right here. Over there we have our bathtub but here was our standing shower. So the person who made it initially didn't put enough stuff underneath, so every time we were stepping, we heard tiny cracks, but we didn't see cracks until recently there were like huge cracks appearing. So we were actually using, what's that? Oh, Ramsey! <laughs> oh no, kitten fell down. He has a severe case of FKS, fallen, kitten syndrome and I know exactly why he wants snacks right you you want snacks kitten they called you chonkers baby but you're not chonkers you're perfect oh, <laughs> oh I love you so much all right let's get you snacks come on get you snacks oh Ramsey's let's go oh too cute so long story short the guys are going to be working on this until I would say another three, four days. Which means essentially it's going to be hard for me to re-recording. So might have to record in between the, the pauses and the, the hammering and things. Also, I wanted to show you that I was in the US last week, I think, or something like that. And I was like, I'm going to pick up some snacks for my birthday. And you, Amerigrains, have the weirdest and coolest snacks ever. Some of these I haven't even tried yet because I'm keeping them for my birthday next week. So, I am a winter solstice baby, which is the 21st of December. All right, so what I found is marshmallow fruit loops. I had never seen this before. We don't even have this in Canada, so I'm super excited about that. What the heck is this, Greens? <laughs> Explain this to me. Sour Patch Kids cereal. So, for those of you who don't have Sour Patch Kids, it's a gummy that is sour in North America. I'm not sure if it's anywhere else in the world. So I'm curious to know how a candy that is sour was turned into a cereal. I mean, it looks exactly like the candy packets. So Sour Patch Kids cereal. It's not even limited edition. That's the scary part, right? Because it just says new. And then I got two of these because my sister recommended them. I haven't even tried them. Cotton candied flavor Captain Crunch. And she tried them. I have and she said it tastes exactly how cotton candy smells without it being too sugary. So that for me is like, what? By the way, I'm curious to know, do you, where you live, have cereal that is different flavored or oddly flavored or anything like that? Because I know that in Japan, they really have only the basics, like cornflakes and maybe frosted flakes, but mostly they have like things like muesli. So this whole sugary, I don't know why I was like that. <laughs> I was like, what is... What is all that stuff? Because when I go to Japan and I bring cereal for my friend in Japan, she requests like Cinnamon Toast Crunch or Apple Jacks or, or things that they really don't have really flavored stuff. So I really get like at least five, six boxes of cereal every time I go. So definitely let me know in the comment section below what kind of cereals you have where you live now that you're seeing some of the American ones. I don't think I mentioned this. So the reason I got these cereals is because I'm going to have a cereal cereal bar <laughs> for my birthday and we're just going to have a jug of milk and we're going to have some cereals and people could just help themselves to cereal because cereal is just such a fun dessert I don't think I eat cereal as a meal I just eat them as a dessert and then I saw this which is really weird but really cool at the same time which is a cracker with two flavors we have bacon and cheddar flavored and then um, Gad carrot cake Oreo. I have never seen this in Canada. So when I saw it, I'm like, okay, I need to get this. Because in all technicality, my favorite flavors really are carrot cake, but only if it's done with cheese and not with that buttercream. I hate buttercream so much. And then we have Reese's chocolate chip cookies. I cheated. I ate it. I opened and I took a couple of them because I love peanut butter and chocolate, but this is the soft version and I'll have to admit they're not that great. 
Would I buy them again? Most definitely not. I really didn't like them at all. I found them tasting more like chocolate chip than actual Reese's chocolate chip. And then the two last things I got from the US are mozzarella and marinara flavored chips. It's gonna be interesting. And then over here, we have Doritos Blaze. And what got my attention is, it's written, it's like licking a volcano. It's like, are you kidding me? I get to have something spicy that tastes like licking a volcano? Sign me up. All right, we're back in here because I wanted to update your grains on my health condition and doctors and medication and all that stuff. By the way, welcome to Fur Galore. There's cat fur for you, cat fur for you, and cat fur for everybody. <laughs> The struggle is real for those of us who have pets. I'm not gonna complain. I love hugging my boys, so. So I finally found a doctor who listens. That is so rare in Canada. I know our, our Medicare is free, but it's really hard to find a doctor that's actually going to validate what you're saying and actually believe what you're saying. And even then, even the doctor right now is still a little skeptical on what I'm telling him. So the doctor that I found is a private doctor and it took two months to get an appointment with him because he's always booked. And even for a private doctor, it's not that expensive compared to what I mentally thought. I thought a private doctor would be like three, four, five hundred dollars per visit, but it's less than that. So at least it's affordable, but still pretty pricey. So the first visit I had with him was in September and he confirmed, looked through all my blood tests and he's like, yeah, and all my symptoms. And he said, yes, you do have Hashimoto's. But as he's listening to my symptoms even more, he's like, okay, well you have PCOS confirmed. At least I know that now, which makes sense. I mean, I was in a lot of pain every, every month. So it was like, Ugh. by the way, this is distracting me. <laughs> this is, what, what are you doing? I know it's morning. I know my hair is not tame. By the way, I'm not oily. It's the, the light, I promise. Look, look, I promise. Oh, it's, it's like I'm glistening. <laughs> I promise it's the light. I promise. So the first uh, visit, he listened to everything. We sat together for a whole hour. He weighed me, he checked my blood pressure. He did all of that manually. Like he has these old machines that he's like putting his stethos stethoscope <laughs> in there and then he's putting it here and he's pressing and he's listening and he's quiet. So he's very old school, which I was really worried because sometimes I see old school doctors and I'm thinking, okay, they're just going to go with, you know, what they think is the right thing as opposed to how I'm feeling and the blood tests and what they think so kind of like a, a holistic approach but no I was wrong he really did listen to what I had to say and he put me on a natural desiccated thyroid pill so it's not Synthroid it's called thyroid that's what the medication is called it's a natural one made from animal glands I think it sounds gross when you say it that way though and he also <laughs> Okay, because I know I've been complaining about my body and my body not reacting to being able to exercise properly, gain muscle mass, or even lose any kind of weight. So he's like, okay, take this thing called Xenical. And it's a fat burning pill. I'm like, I don't really need this because I don't eat fatty foods. And he's like, just try it. I expect that at least by next time you should have at least lost, you know, a couple of kilograms, you know, anywhere between, I guess, five and 10 pounds is what he expected in a couple of months. I'm like, okay, but. I mean, I naturally just intermittent fast. So I only eat once a day in terms of intermittent fasting. By the way, apparently it's really good for you. I've been feeling good on it. I only eat as of 4 p.m. until about 8 p.m. That's my window of eating and I don't even, even overeat then. So do your research, don't don't follow. This is not medical advice. This is just what I've been doing. So he gave me those, those fat burning pills and I did them. And then the next time we went and he weighed me and my weight went up again and I'm like, like, I don't know. So he's like, okay, well, obviously that isn't the issue. It looks like your insulin resistance is really being the culprit here. So he put me on metformin, which is a medication for diabetics, but also apparently it helps insulin resistance. So he put me on that and I had my first dose and he's like, yeah, you, your body might not be able to tolerate it. And holy moly, that kept me up all night. 
Like I had to go to the washroom. <laughs> it was just, it wasn't very pleasant, but it was my first dose. I don't know if the body gets used to it. So I guess we'll see. And then he also doubled my thyroid pill. In addition to that, I did some research and found that there's a medication called LDN that is apparently really helpful for people who have chronic ailments. Usually the actual medication is called naltrexone, I believe, but they have a low dose version of it that they're able to prescribe for people who have chronic ailments. Like, check it out if you want to read on it, because when I was doing some research, it found that it worked in 48% of cases, not all cases, only 48% of cases, it really helped people. More specifically, those with Crohn's disease, Hashimoto's, uh, fibro. So all of these chronic ailments apparently were really, really, really helped with the microdosing of the naltrexone. So I'm really excited about that. I put in my requests at a compounding pharmacy because not all pharmacies make it. And it specifically said it can't be slow release and it can't have calcium carbonate as a filler. Apparently these two things are really big in hindering the effectiveness of the naltrexone, low dose of it. So I'm going to be starting that probably on Saturday because the pharmacy is a little far so I have to drive all the way to pick it up but I'm really excited to try it because even though there's no medical research there are some small journals that published about it so that is really interesting for me to check it out so if you're interested why don't you do some research and see if your doctor is open to it and if your doctor has any advice with it but of course I'll, t I'll do the testing I mean 48% of cases is better than nothing right I'm really curious they say it's so effective in those cases that sometimes people have to either completely remove their thyroid medication or lower it drastically so they say be very careful because when it's effective it's effective apparently I believe so I know that many of you grains have chronic ailments, so I'm really curious, in addition or instead of medication, what do some of you grains do? Do you meditate? Do you do something that is more calming? Do you find that it helps? I would be very interested in knowing in the comment section below because I find that we're a pretty good support group, so I'm really curious what you do. Until then, I will see you grains in the next Vlogmas. Remember, no Vlogmases on Tuesdays and Fridays.